guys welcome back this is Val from GMLite. In today's video I show you how we can add 3D models to your Photoshop images or photos in just 5 minutes and 7 easy steps using the free Dance Studio 3D software. Now it will take me a little longer since I'm explaining things at the same time but once you get the flow you can do it in under 5 minutes. Now this tutorial assumes you already have Dance Studio installed and if you don't you can get it for free there is a link below this video. All right, let's get to it. So step number one is to measure and write down the size of your image. Pretty much image, image size, that's it, right? I'm gonna write down these two settings, the width and height. And if your image is really big, like 10,000 pixels wide, you can scale it down if you don't need that size. All right, step number two. Inside Dash Studio, in the render settings, we go to general and we're gonna enter the same value here we just found in Photoshop, right? And if you don't have this already set, you wanna disable constraint proportions. That's where you can just enter the values and then you can lock it and then you can change if you need to, to a different you know, size and this one will then follow, all right? Cool. All right, so next we're gonna add the background. So in the environment tab, by the way, if you can't locate it, it's up here, window, panes, and environment, up here, right? Cool. Now we're gonna just browse here and choose backdrop. And you wanna keep it white. So if there's a different color, just click here and choose white. And then here, we're gonna click and browse for our image. Here it is, there's image number five, open. Cool, it's already there. We are now at step number three, which is where we're gonna add a camera and roughly match it to the photo. So I'm gonna just click on new camera, select it over here. And as you can see, you can see kind of like a ground. This is where you can just, you know, rotate the camera and roughly position it like that. So it has the right perspective look and all that. Now, what you wanna do when you're matching the camera is a couple of things. First of all, you wanna have this kind of proper height. And that kind of depends on the photographer's height during the photo, you know, when it was taken. And that's something you have to kind of guess a little bit. I, you know, from looking at the tire marks here in the road, I'd say it's around 50 or 60 centimeters. So just add that there and it's that, right? Then we can just right click up here and fine tune the horizon. This will change as we add our vehicle in a moment. Now, another thing you wanna check with your camera is the focal length, right? So, or the zoom level. So pretty much select the camera here in the scene tab, go to parameters and click on camera. And now we can set here, as you can see, it says 65. And that's something you can do to zoom in or zoom out. And pretty much it's kind of, again, difficult to guess, but you know, by looking at how this changes, if you zoom in, you see that it changes, it becomes more blocky, um, as opposed to being a low number, it's more exaggerated, right? So you can see how that changes across the road. If you have some lines on the, on the road or some kind of marks you can follow, you can roughly see how that changes. So I'm gonna just leave it as a default 65 because I think that was pretty good, right? So cool, so step number four is we're gonna add our vehicle. Now, let's go ahead here, content library, and we're gonna choose the car. And we're gonna just load it real quick. There it is, and once loaded, I'm just gonna back off the camera a little bit. And here we can do some basic operations, like, well, what kind of angle can we use? Where does it look good and so forth, right? And scale is important because it's not just about the camera, it's also, you know, how large is the car compared to components in your photo or image, right? So you can roughly, position it where it should be. And you gotta have kind of like a feel for it, right? There is no exact science here. Now, Dash Studio comes with some content included for free. It also gives you access to a huge library of 40,000 plus high quality you know, vehicles, characters, buildings, and full sets and whatnot. And starting from 199 up. So for this video, I'm just gonna use this car. And I'm also gonna preload the lady, which I have created earlier here. So this is the Gaia female character. I've got an outfit and a pose and some hair added and also some glasses, which is kind of cool. So pretty much like I mentioned in the dash store, there's a lot of items you can you know get extra 
And I think the Gaia character is really, really good and she looks quite for real too. All right, so we've come to step number five. See how fast we are progressing? We are at number five. And here's where we're gonna add some lighting. Now, there is a lot of ways to light images inside Dash Studio. You can use your custom lights, spotlights, point lights, whatnot. And I'm just gonna use a very simple approach. I'm gonna use the built-in global illumination system, right? So this has a um, kind of like a sky and also a sunlight. So I'm gonna turn on eye ray preview so that we can see what's going on. And pretty much there is a few important things here. One of them is the height of the sun. The other is the color of the image of the scale, right? I mean, does it look like it's sunset or is it uh, overcast? What's the color scale, right? So you can always, you know, in addition to here setting a summer each date and time, you can set a different time that will have a kind of longer shadows on the ground. All right. Oh, that was sunset. Let's do 20. You can see there's very long shadows now. And that kind of doesn't fit the image, right? You have to look, what, where are the shadows in the image? Where's the lighting coming from? How does it look like? Well, it looks like it's kind of a little bit longer shadows, something like that, right? Looking at the, you know, shadows in the, in the background. And then you also have to obviously rotate the dome. And that's where you set the direction of the light. If you set it wrong, you're gonna end up having the shadow coming from the wrong angle. It's like, hello, this mountain here kind of suggests the sun is coming from the left. So we cannot have it from the right. All right, we gotta have a similar angle. Now, another thing is the tint. I mean, if you have a kind of orangish tint in your image, you will wanna have it here doing just plain white might be a little bit too as you can see generic looking or if you have an image uh, an image that's more blue tinted or whatever color you can just set it here to match and I'm, i mean you can further adjust this in photoshop later i'm gonna show that in a moment but this is where you can do the rough estimation here right one more cool thing is the ground you want to have it to manual you want to set it to zero so it doesn't you know move as you're playing with your items and then a very important thing you got to draw the ground if you don't you're gonna not catch the shadows so that's something you want to have obviously right draw ground and looking again at the shadows in the photo or your image how do they look like do you need to have them a little bit more subtle all right there is a setting here called ground shadow intensity if you set it to a lower value, you will have less intense shadows. Obviously, this is way too much, but I'm just stating the obvious fact, right? You can move the shadow intensity. I mean, some photos will have very, very dark shadows. Some will have less dark shadows. So you wanna match that roughly, okay? This is a car, it's a huge item, so it will naturally look a little bit darker underneath, right? But you can also increase the shadow intensity. Do it really, really dark. It depends on how your you know image looks like from the get-go all right so let's get back with that we are ready for step number six this is when we actually create the final images now you can render from dash studio without the background as a png with transparency then move that over to photoshop but i'm not gonna do that today because i want to be able to isolate the car and girl without the shadow inside Photoshop to further be able to control exactly those items, right? So simply put, I'm gonna just set my size here, render size, all right? I'm gonna set it to render quality one and just the amount of samples I have here, 15,000, and I'm gonna just click on render. And that's it. Now, depending on your system, the graphic card you have, this might take you know, a few seconds or a minute or so, but it's usually very fast, especially since the photo is already pre-made, all right? This is one of the cool tricks I teach, is to use as little 3D as possible, because then it goes really, really fast, because the photo, I mean, the photo is already done, right? Okay, cool. So this is our image, and by the way, it's kind of done right now, so we can just go ahead and cancel and save it right this is our final image i'm just gonna go ahead here file save last render and i'm gonna call it render car 
URL and that's it now like I mentioned I want to have an extra ability to control the girl and car in Photoshop so what I'm going to do is render a mask and inside the studio it's very easy to create masks all I want to do is remove the background so we have just white all right and next I want to darken the scene so I'm going to go to environment and choose scene only to remove the lighting and voila we got the mask ready now very important when you render masks is to in the here filtering section not use any bloom filter and not use any denoiser denoiser is an rtx graphic card feature that speeds up rendering you don't want to have that on masks because they are kind of sensitive with the you know hard contrast and all that right so you want to render without those features now you also want to disable render quality when you have it enabled it you, know, you can set a quality value here one is really good across the board but when rendering masks you want to turn that off to force absolute top-notch quality then hit render and you will create the mask now rendering masks goes really fast so it's not something we have to wait on forever pretty much it's already done by I'd say now yep so we can go ahead and just click on cancel and save our image and I want to call it just mask BMP for maximum quality all right and finally step number seven we're gonna combine these layers inside Photoshop now why do I have a mask it's because I wanted to be able to further control and tweak how the car and girl looks like and here's the thing sometimes when you render your images and then end up here you might think man there's some color mismatch I want to tweak that right so the cool thing is you can now create a new layer duplicate this at the bottom here create a mask now go back here let's copy this ctrl a to select all ctrl c to copy go back here and alt click on it and then use ctrl v to paste now use command on a mac of course right and now when I click on this top layer here I can have full control over the background so let's say I want to have a little more punch or make it darker and sometimes you don't see these things until you, you know end up in Photoshop and you think man what was I thinking right here we can just adjust that a little bit if you need to and also play with contrast if you need to now the more important thing here is though playing with the girl and the car so what I'm gonna do is create another copy here and now on this copy I want to alt click here and change this to invert so it's vice versa so now if I click on this top layer here I've got the girl and car which I can tweak manually here right and one of the things I might need to do here is adjust the color or curves and I usually adjust curves like that if I want something to look more orangish I can just scale down the blue and the green a little bit of half of that so I get a more orangish tint if you need to right as a final bonus step I want to introduce you to something I see it's often overlooked when blending 3d models with uh, photos or images and that is the sharpness or blurriness you know sometimes the photo ends up being way too sharp compared to 3d art or sometimes it's vice versa you have the rendered image in this case the girl in the car looking way too sharp compared to the photo if i just zoom in a little bit i can sense that the girl is slightly slightly more sharp than the ground right it's, it's a nuance it's not a huge difference but i'd like to make her and the car a little bit more blurry to match the background so what i can do now with this top layer is go to filter blur Gaussian blur and you don't want to add a huge amount it's not about that right it's about adding 0.1 or 0.2 to slightly set it off so it just matches the photo all right this is a cool thing you don't want to skip that and then of course we can just for fun add a filter combine it all using a collection here just real quick and I'm just gonna throw in we got an update here let's do that later I'm just using my favorite filter which is pastel and just choose a preset whatever that looks cool I think the blue tone is really cool 
Let's use that, click on OK, and just adjust that to taste. Here, we're dragging down the opacity. We don't need that much, right? Just do a little bit of it. All right, so pretty much that's it, guys. So as you can see, it was super easy, super fast. And if you'd like to see more Dash Studio and Photoshop tutorials, then I have a special deal going on right now. We can get started with just $1. So check that out below. Also, I'm giving away cool photo studio for Dash Studio, complete with studio props, lights, a filter, and 27 video tutorial completely for free. So there's also a link below this video to that as well. So that's all for today, guys. Thanks so much for watching. Comment below, like, and follow. And thank you so much for supporting my free channel. So go ahead, have fun with your art, and I'll see you soon again.